In this important update, we're going to be checking out the Tronxy D01. In a review recently, I tested this machine and discovered that it had thermal runaway protection disabled from factory, which could have led to a catastrophic issue here in my garage. But I have some updates from Tronxy, what they've done to try to correct that. And let's look at the machine more in general, because it's actually a kind of interesting little unit with linear rails and a Core XY design. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. If you haven't seen the video that I did previously on this machine, let me just summarize it for you. I tested this machine over the course of a month or so, and in the last print I did before that review, it ran into an issue where the thermistor was disconnected and the machine went into thermal runaway. Luckily, right at the end of the print, so nothing too dangerous happened, but this is a real big issue and I raised, it raised serious red flags for me, so I mentioned it quite heavily in that video. Well, when Tronxy saw that review, um, then they obviously got a little bit concerned because I was saying the machine was, in their words, saying bad words. So I was pressured initially to take that review down, which I didn't do. And what I think happened is it got to the point where the person I was dealing with is like a sales rep. And it went down the line where actually someone who understood what thermal runaway protection really was, realized how serious that this was. And then within 24 hours, they got back to me with this. Basically, Tronxy has gone around and updated the firmware on all of their machines to have thermal runaway protection enabled, as well as min temp error. So there's two different things. Thermal runaway protection is where the thermistor might fall away from the hot end, and it might keep trying to heat, but wondering like, why is the thermistor not heating up more? So that in that case, if there was no thermal runaway protection in place, the hot end would just keep heating till it self-destructs and probably catches fire. But with thermal runaway protection enabled, it will catch that, realize it's not heating up quick enough, and throw an error and require a full hard reset. Min temp error is where the thermistor might be broken or disconnected completely, and it'll throw a number like minus 50 degrees Celsius, and in that circumstance, the machine will go, well, that's not a real number, and also go into an error. So this machine has now been updated in firmware with those two protections. And I'm gonna walk you through how to update your Tronxy if it has the Qi2 board that this machine does. So Tronxy provided on their website the updated firmware. What you need is a fresh bit of uh, installation media. So the Tronxy D01 uses a micro SD card. So get a fresh one, format it, load it up with everything you need from that update firmware. So there'll be a whole package in a, in a .rar or something. Put it onto the SD card, make, make sure the machine's off, plug that SD card in and turn it on. And the machine will automatically update to that new firmware on its own. It actually looks like it's trying to do a print, but it's actually a progress bar for the firmware update. Alternatively, it looks like Tronxy's uploaded just the configuration file for a lot of their machines to update them. Uh, so what this will do is it's a series of G-code commands that will tell the control board what to change within firmware instead of just completely reflashing it. And installing new configuration is as simple as putting the SD card in and selecting that G-code file as if you're going to print it. And of course, nothing prints and it will update your system that way. Now, I don't know if this is a better way to do it or not, but as long as the protections are enabled in the firmware, as long as this works, then it seems fine to me. So it takes all of a few minutes to do, and now this machine is safe. Well, at least in terms of thermal runaway protection and min temp error. Now, there is a, a lot of questions raised here. Why wasn't it done in the first place? Uh, why did it take a YouTuber like myself to, you know, I guess, put them in a corner where they had to update it quickly? Um, I don't have the answers for that. My theory is that way back in the day where this firmware was probably forked from, it's Qi2, but it's the Qi2 board. I don't know, it originally might have been forked from Marlin. I'm not too sure. But way back in the day when these printers were really cheap, the, the thermal runaway protection would often trigger accidentally. Uh, this is actually a big issue with the Prusa Mark II, where the cooling fan was so strong it would bounce off the print, if it was a big flat print, into the hot end and prevent it from heating up enough, and it would trigger thermal runaway. Now, I think, long time ago, someone somewhere disabled that, because they were getting um, incorrect errors, and they thought, well, let's just get rid of the, the protection. But, you know, it's 2019, the hot end on this, while it has its issues, can heat up very easily and gets hot quickly, so there's no reason for thermal runaway protection to be disabled here and across any machine that's currently on the market. So that's that out of the way. I am really happy 
that Tronxy responded so quickly and took action. If you have a Tronxy Tronix Y3D printer, then go to their website. I'm going to link it in the description below. Find the new firmware for your machine and flash it because I don't think any of them had thermal running protection uh, before I made that video. So that's out of the way. Let's talk about the, the, the DO1 because it's actually, this is what made me so frustrated. It's actually a really interesting little machine. So full, uh, full bed volume is 220, 220, 220. It's a cube and it's got linear rails on a core XY system. So what does that mean? Well, instead of having one motor for X and one motor for Y, it has two motors in a complicated belt path that depending on which direction they're spinning in the same direction or opposite from each other, it'll change the direction of the, the actual extruder in both XY directions. So this is clever because it means the motors can be mounted hard to the frame, removing them from the moving mass, I suppose. So in theory, Core XY and HBOT designs can move quicker because there's less moving mass. Now this machine has a Bowden design as well, so there's not even an extruder motor on this hot end. So this machine in theory can go very quickly. On top of that, it has the linear rails. Now, these are interesting rails, actually. The top one is black. Uh, actually, they're all black. And they are, they're clones. They're not genuine high wind rails, as far as I'm aware, because they would be way too expensive. This machine occupies quite a budget price point. But that's also something really cool about it, is linear rails mean a more precise, more accurate and rigid design than linear rods, which obviously they got no supports through the center of them, just support at each end, and they can sort of, they can flex a bit. Linear rails are fully supported across the whole design, which means a more rigid design. Right, so what's not so great about this machine? Well, the hot end leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I had to ramp up my retraction to 12 millimeters at 40 millimeters per second to get anything usable out of, out of this hot end. And once I did that, the stringing I was experiencing went away and I was starting to get really quite good prints. So for example, I've done some more prints since updating the firmware. This is a Benchy and it's not bad at all. Printed at 0.15 millimeter layer heights. There's a few areas where cooling clearly is an issue, but also there's a few areas where the retraction that's so heavy is preventing it from fully uh, loading filament back in, for example, that tiny little bit at the back where like the flag's meant to go in. Nothing too bad. This is a stringy test and it shows the best results I get using a 12 millimeter uh, retraction as well on this Bowden. And finally, just to stress test this machine, I did this lattice bunny. Now, it did complete, which is admirable because lots of other 3D printers fail to do this. They catch on it and it breaks. The issue though is you can see areas where it's clearly under extruded because it's been pulling so much filament back in and it's such a tiny extrusion path, it hasn't really started to flow again, which is a big downside of using such large retraction numbers. But there is no fallen over bars. So cooling could be better on this hot end. It's just a little single duct with it points to one side of the hot end. I don't really like it. I really would actually prefer to replace the entire hot end with something else, maybe a small direct drive like the Hermes. A few other quirks of this machine I didn't get to mention before in the other video is the uh, limit switches. They're momentary push buttons and I don't know why they went with them. They do work, but the preci precision and repeatability of these is in question. And something that's really funny, and I experienced this with the other Tronxy XY2 I reviewed last year, is when it parks and homes, they make a beeping sound, but they stay active. So as this machine's homing, you can just bump it and it's, they beep because they're right against the uh, their, their limit point for zero. So, <laughs> That's interesting. For X and Y, sure, unless you're recovering from a power loss, the repeatability isn't so important. But the one at the back, the, the Z axis, I don't know why they went with it. It sort of pushes on the edge of the linear bearing, which is very iffy in my opinion. But it does seem to hold a decent enough first layer so far. And a decent first layer is critical on this ultra base style bed, which does heat up quite fast. It's 220, remember? So quite small in terms of some other machines at this price point, but when the prints cool down, they just pop free. Uh, I am currently using quite a large brim on these parts, but look, they just pull away when you're done. And finally, what are the connector that caused my issues in the first place? Well, I've just hot glued it in place. Tronxy needs to figure out a better way to do this connector where it's more securely in place. But now that the, the protections are there, it's not so dangerous if uh, it decides to come free. It's not going to burn down if you have the updated firmware. But this connection doesn't really hold, in my experience, 
with uh, the gantry moving around so much, they need to update it to something that locks in place better. I've just hot glued mine in place for now. It's not a good fix, but for mine, it means this machine will be able to operate and finally, something I haven't even had a chance to test yet is this machine can be bought with protective covers to lock the heat in to sort of build a, a passively heated chamber, I suppose, to print higher temperature materials like ABS, uh, better success with PETG and things like that. Now, I haven't tested them yet, but in my experience, unless the top is covered, the heat just gushes out, which is why you see machines like the, the Chiditex X Maker with little hats, <laughs> which sort of helps to keep the heat from rising and escaping. So I'm not sure how much eff effect they'll have, but at least they will help keep, you know, curious hands coming in from the side. If you might have a more busy environment, this machine might be in versus my garage where I don't really care. So that's going to end this update video on the Tronxy D01. And I do appreciate that Tronxy has actually taken this seriously and updated the firmware on their machines, but I'm gonna leave the old video up because really this should have been done years ago. It shouldn't have taken a YouTuber to call them out on it. So in terms of this machine and my recommendations, please, if you buy any of these machines, um, actually any, any machine at the moment, check if it has thermal runaway and if it doesn't, demand updated firmware to make sure that it's in place. I know a lot of you guys in the comments will say that I'm making a bit too big a deal out of thermal runaway protection, but look, I talk to, you know, through these videos, hundreds of thousands of people, and I don't want it on my conscience, someone buying a machine I recommend, and then it catching fire and their house burning down. I could not imagine that. Um, so I'm, I err on the side of caution, but if you do want to pick up this machine because of its mechanical design, which is very good, then there is again purchase links in the video description below but i suspect there'll be lots of these in warehouses without the updated firmware so please update your firmware yabba 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 thanks for watching guys i do hope you found this video useful and enjoyed the update also i've been updating people on the community posts for makers muse so if you see these sort of posts with some text and videos or or pictures i don't use them very often but they're a really great way for me to share my experiences and also twitter i'm very active on twitter at makers muse if you want to ask me questions or be there for when I like discover things like at the first moment I do, because I'm always on Twitter first. You can follow me on there as well. So thanks for watching guys. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye.